Okay, um, we'll move on. Um, Cameron Johnson. Cameron, I, I, I hope you can keep your remarks kind of brief because we um, obviously uh, I don't expect me to talk that. <laughs> First off, I'd like to go a little bit off the top and say that about the bus driver that was commended uh, earlier on Facebook, I would like to thank you very much for posting that on there. I was the writer that he had inspired, and I, he changed my life, and I would like to give a shout out to him for everything he's done for me. And um, I know that some bus drivers out there make some really, really stupid decisions, but they're not horrible people, and I just want to make sure that everyone knows that. And anyway, on to my speech. Obviously, I'm Cameron Johnson from Local Bus Riders Unite and the Mount Scott Community Center Team Volunteer Corps. I'm 16 years old, just graduated from homeschooling, and I would like to say that I am surprised at what little people my age know about the bus system. I created and hosted a day camp this summer for teenagers that involved a lot of traveling on the bus system. One task they had to do was to get to Greek College over on 28th Northstock. And they were so uninformed about the bus system that they were trying to walk the McLaughlin bus from Mount Scott Community Center, which is miles and miles away on 72nd Avenue. All throughout the week, if it was not a max line, the campers were lost. Now, everyone in the city seems to know where the max goes and where to catch it, because it's a, national, it's a local icon. But people are trying to walk five miles away to buses, thinking that it's around the corner. We have a problem. Sure, the teens have free bus passes from the schools, but they sure don't know how to use them. I say it's time we educate the teens on traveling locally on the bus system and on the bus system before they end up in a different country trying to get around the block. In schools, we can have some sort of presentation or class on simple facts about bus lines, such as where they go, how often they run, and the thoroughfare street. Simply covering the frequent service lines and neighborhood lines can make a world of difference. Te teaching people bus etiquette and manners could write people's view on teenagers on the bus. And most importantly, like Darla said, we have to educate on safety. We don't want anything bad to happen like it already has. It's simple because this one class will cover all the bases. It'll get people informed and mobilized. People go so far as to make people active in a community about bus service. I know that my knowledge of the bus system helped me. But I'm self-taught. I'm probably one of the few in the city that has ever put the time and interest into doing so. Simply put, a little effort goes a long way. Thank you, uh, Cameron, for that suggestion. I think that has merit. So, uh, Michael Levine. I, I want to apologize to Michael because I somehow um, you signed up earlier and uh, you didn't give an opportunity to speak. So, uh, Four o'clock in the morning comes off early to get here to first. <laughs> <laughs>
Mary was going to be here today, and uh, she went out on her scooter yesterday because she still can't get on to lift service with her power chair, uh, trying that to make a concession, so to speak. Uh, TriMet claims that they went above the uh, ADA, and I'm still saying that they're still trying to reach for the spirit of the ADA. Uh, Mary can't qualify for lift with her chair unless she can provide a personal care attendant, which I had written to staff and the board prior to the decision that she no longer had a personal care attendant. So Mary went on on her scooter yesterday, which weighs less, which would then qualify her for lift. Well, she sent me an email at 6.20 this morning that her hands are too sore, her body's too sore, she's sick from being out on the scooter, and there's a reason that she graduated, so to speak, from a scooter to a power chair, and she now remembers because of what happened to her yesterday. So Mary is not here today uh, for that reason. Uh, what is the board going to do to assist people like Mary get left paratransit service. Uh, can the contrivant staff think out of the box? Uh, I came up with another idea a couple days ago. I, I wonder why staff hasn't come up with any ways to uh, deliver the service. Uh, Trinet seems now to be willing, even though she'd be in pain, but she's willing to get up out of her chair and board separately. But Trinet wants her to have a PCA to operate her chair. Well, what about putting her chair in neutral. She can do that herself. She can get out of her chair, put it in neutral, board the bus, then the operator can push the chair. Now it's a manual chair, it's a neutral. Can push the chair onto the lift and board her separately. Why doesn't Trimet come up with issues or ways, I should say, uh, to accommodate instead of just saying, no, you have to have a PCA. Uh, if you'll also recall in the written testimony part, uh, when uh, Shelley Lomax uh, first commented back to me, she's one of the reasons she gave me that uh, going over the common wheelchair definition of 600 pounds, there would be restrictions to the service that TriMet could deliver because of the extra weight on lift buses. But yet, TriMet's willing to deliver lift service to the person person's mobility device, and now let's add the weight of a PCA. I, I don't get it. Folks, we need to figure out a way to get lift service for Mary. Uh, I don't know if this board's going to do anything or not. I'm sorry that uh, I'm being a little bit uh, angry, but I'm, I am angry. Mike is the second issue on my written testimony. We talked about Mike last month, I touched on it, uh, I'm sorry, in July, I touched on it uh, briefly this morning. Mike has appealed the original decision. Lyft staff has added a condition for him, uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying this correctly, but he can now ride Lyft rush hour morning, rush hour evening, because there would be more people, more chance of him being injured, you know, on fixed ground. What about lunchtime crowds? Just as crowded at lunchtime. He can't ride at lunchtime. So he goes without lunch or he just, you know, you've cut service. Buses are more crowded today than ever. Max trains, we've been fighting for years to get priority seating areas so that people with disabilities can sit in the priority seating areas. They're so full of uh, folks with strollers, with folks with luggage, you know what a danger that is to him with his brittle bones? Why can't we just say, give him unconditional lift service like he used to have? Why does crime have to put him in harm's way? Okay, okay I'll go on. Uh, Patricia Kepler, her son's in ICU, uh, has nothing to do with other than she's asked me to share uh, her disappointment not, uh, by not being here. She was going to be here today as an advocate as well. For the board members that don't know Patricia, uh, Patricia is a CAT member. Uh, she works at ILR, Independent Living Resource. Uh, she's uh, also an advocate for people with disabilities, and she's on one of my committee members of 
Department of Disability Advisory Committee that I chair. Uh, she had a client that came to her. This is a client that's been a long time user of Lyft. She just got turned down because her chair is two inches wider than the minimal, minimum standard of a common wheelchair. But yet, Lyft has been delivering her service for years and years. So obviously, the lifts are wide enough to accommodate her chair. She's been declined because her chair is two inches wider. It's 32 inches instead of 30 inches. But your lifts can accommodate it. Why is she not being given lift service? Is it money? It's the only thing that we can think of in the disability community. You keep talking about how it's $29 a ride for lift, and it's two, three dollars on a fixed route vehicle. Is it money? Is money coming first over and above serving people with disabilities? You've got the equipment. The fourth, the fourth. I'm going to interrupt you. I'm sorry, Rick, because we're not getting any answers today, and I know that. Uh, the, the fourth, fourth person, I'm not even going to go into specifics, but I'm going to talk very generic, and this is one that might be coming to you. She actually contacted Disability Rights Oregon. Uh, one of the attorneys there called me because she knew I was working on lift issues. Uh, there, there's a person that has been turned down. She's got cognitive issues. She's been, a, again, a long-time lift rider. There's no weight restrictions. There's no wide wheelchairs. There is no common wheelchair. She's been turned down. This is a 40-year-old woman that has a job. She has memory, short-term memory issues. She's vulnerable to being picked up, possibly sexually abused. There's all kinds of issues. I've listed some more in my written testimony issues I hope you take a look at when it comes to folks with cognitive issues and what the consequences could be. You know, I, I, do you guys know if you even have any legal standings between turning these folks down? Uh, who's making the decisions to try and get for people with cognitive issues? Do you have uh, doctors on staff? I, I mean, how do you turn people down that are vulnerable to just being out in the public? That's one of the beauties of Lyft. It's curb to curb and mandate. TriMet is door to door. This woman is safe in, on, a, on a lift bus being delivered from origin to destination. She's not safe origin to destination on a fixed route bus if she can't even do it. If she doesn't get lost because she can't make a transfer. I mean, we're turning people down right and left, and, and why? Money. And I'm going to go to uh, Part B, if I may. Uh, I have filed three grievances lately. The first one I appealed to Neil. I should have been contacted last week. Still not contacted. I filed two grievances directly to Neil because uh, TriMet's ADA Title II coordinator uh, would be a conflict. He's part of the reason for the, the grievances. I should have been contacted uh, last week on one, and I should have been contacted today on the other. There's three grievances. So people with disabilities have filed grievances. Don't we count? And I would like an answer to that one. I'm really upset that I can't even get replies according to TriMet's own policy, which is in the packet today that I presented. TriMet's own policy, and I can't be replied to. I don't I, Michael, let's stop there. You have general manager of chance to reply. And then, then we're, we're going to move on, honestly, because we, we just have, I mean, we have unlimited time. I mean, really, I, I, I've done my very best to uh, hear people out today, as you know, and I, I do read your emails and um, understand the issues. I, I just want to, uh, at some point, try to be able to... Um, at some point, I'd like to see people with disabilities and people service no, and not I, be discriminated I, I, against. You're, you're a passionate advocate, and we appreciate that. I, I know that, and I know board members know that. So. Um, anyway, Neil, would you like to? Uh, 